a change really does happen in a person when they open up their lives to Christ. And I want to describe how that, that works. Because many people uh, sit in a pew like this, um, and they're afraid that God is going to change them in a way they don't want to be changed. Or they have not come to that point where they have really been honest with God. Well, he, they, they say, yeah, he knows everything about me. They have not been honest with him. And so they sit there in the pew and go through the motions, but their heart is guarded and protected against any influence of the Holy Spirit. But this verse tells us exactly, in my view, how change occurs. And we want change, every single one of us. We want to change certain aspects of our life, our personal life, our marriage, uh, the community we live in. We want a deep sense of hope, uh, a purpose. We want something um, you know, significant to propel us in life. We know, we're smart enough to know that life is not about all this accumulation of stuff. There's a deeper thing about it. I look around our church and I, I'm very familiar with some of the loads that people carry, a, a child that's uh, troubled um, or disabled, a, a, um, a spouse that is um, an active, um, addictive alcoholic, uh, a, uh, a, a woman who's out of work, uh, a, a family where both people are out of work. And, you know, I, I, I don't think the Bible changes the outside world so that you read the Bible, you get a job. But I think what I'm describing here is God moving deeply within us to give us the resources and the change, change our heart, our character, so that we have grace under pressure. Let's look at the verse. It's just one verse. He says, and we <clears throat> who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Your English teacher would call that a compound sentence. Uh, let me break it up. It says, and we are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory. Who's we? The people with unveiled faces who reflect the Lord's glory. That's the way you can read that verse. So, let's, be, let's look at this. I want to be very clear that I'm talking about a specific kind of change. I'm not talking about the outward appearance. I mean, obviously, God can't do much about that. I mean, look at me. I went into a barber shop a couple of months ago you know, a haircutting place, not a barbershop, and um, the woman took my name, and I, she was walking me back to the chair, and a guy rushed in the room, rushed in the um, uh, haircutting place, and said, uh, how long will it be to the next hair, till I can get in? And she looked at him, and she looked at me, and she looked at my head, and she looked at him and said, it won't be long, it won't be long. <laughs> That's not the change I'm talking about, the outward change. I'm talking about the idea of becoming more and more like Christ. That your life, that you would live your life out of that truth and reality. That as Paul says in Galatians chapter 4, that Christ would be formed in you. That's the change we're talking about here. So we look at one thing in this passage, and the first thing I see is that it is God who is the actor. It is God who is reaching us. Look at, look at just the voice, what they call the voice of the sentence. We are transformed. We are being transformed. We're not doing it ourselves. But God is working in us to transform us. You know, my mother said, almost, she said so many times as I was growing up, almost so many times I thought it was in the Bible. She said, God helps those who help themselves. You ever heard that? God helps those who help themselves. But the reality is, on these central issues, God doesn't know anyone who can help themselves. We cannot help ourselves. On these central core issues that govern and guide our lives, the character issues, let me tell you, we, 
this may be offensive to you, we cannot help ourselves. We cannot, from the inside out, become a new person. If you just examine all the miracles of Jesus, he came and he did this and that, deaf, mute, blind, people living in shame, people who were having difficulties in all their life. Do you think that when Jesus came and did the miracle to heal them, don't you think they would have done it themselves if they could? The Bible is telling us something very powerful here, that that there are, there's so much about our life that's important, that's deep within us, we can't change without intervention. Do you think that if we could change on our own, God would send his own son to die on the cross? Listen to this, please. Do you think that God would say, you know, I know they could change on their own. I know that they become formed in the image of God on their own, but... I'm going to send my son to die anyway. No, it took the cross to create the kind of intervention that allows us to change. There's an old Anglican collect. It says, Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. We are being transformed, the Bible says. You can't transform yourself. You can't kind of work this up inside. No matter how many self-help books, no, may, no, ma no matter how many daytime gurus tell you that you can, no, ma no matter how many ministries, huge ministries, are built on a false gospel of this, you cannot change yourself. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Meaning that the process of transformation is completely out of your control. You play no part in it. You are simply allowed, you are simply birthed. Please understand this. You're going to be working too hard to be too good, and you'll fail too much, you'll be discouraged if you don't get this central part. You cannot transform yourself by yourself completely out of your control. Our daughter, Tay, our oldest daughter, is pregnant again. This will be her third child, our fifth grandchild, and we are blessed. A couple of months ago, when she told us the news, she also told us the delivery date, the due date, was Christmas Day. And uh, when I got on the phone, I said, sweetie, that's a little inconvenient. <laughs> Can you change that? Can you maybe move it after Christmas? I'm really busy. I work this holiday. Come on. Obviously, she can't. It's completely out of there. Things are going on inside of her that are unreachable, untouchable by human hands. And this is a point I want to get to with you. The things we really want to get to the things that will really change who we are and, and make us more and more like the patient, loving, joy-filled Christ that we read about, those things are beyond our reach. God has to do it. And this is the point that uh, Paul is making, that we are tra being transformed as we... And he goes on to say, with unveiled faces, reflect the Lord's glory. To make a monetary gift that supports the ministries of Christ Church Plano, visit ChristChurchPlano.org.